Here is my slow motion manual tracking system for my Zumel Z12 12 inch Dobsonian telescope. This was designed and manufactured by David Katz, a cabinet maker right here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is really an amazing piece of equipment. It consists of two parts an azimuth control, which is this handle that you see sticking up right here and it is driven or it's attached to the telescope using existing screws to construct the base so you can see that right there and it's driven by a pulley system and a belt and that little aluminum tab there attaches under the rubber feet of the baseboard to help keep the belt on when the belt tension is adjusted just so, and you can see that the uh, that the attachment screws are slotted, so you can adjust the adjust, adjust the tension very easily. When you turn the knob, the motion is incredibly smooth. It's instantaneous, and it really, really, really makes moving the telescope in azimuth very, very, very easy. It's a delightful system. You're coming into the picture you can see the altitude control this is the azimuth control it's got this nice big knob on it that you can grip pretty well these are rubber and uh, i put the uh, glow in the dark dots on it that's that's my addition but uh but it works incredibly well and you can actually switch this out for a ratchet control he calls it the tiller system and uh, and some people might prefer that. I, I really like the uh, what he calls his micro knob. It's really really great. But even in this video, you you can see how responsive the system is. But to actually move it in person, it's just amazing. Plus, if you want to slew your telescope normally, you can just slew it normally, no problem. Just got to watch out for the uh, for the micro knob, but it slews very very easily any way you want to go. But you can make very 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 fine adjustments, incredibly fine adjustments using that knob. And uh, Dan kind of advertises this as power steering for your knob, and that's exactly what it is. With the ratios of the uh, pulley and the belt going around the round baseboard, it's really something. The second part of the system is the altitude adjustment. And you can see it's got a similar knob to the azimuth adjustment. Okay, it's exactly the same design, but it contains a heavy brass bearing. And this is a threaded rod. This is an Acme uh, lead screw thread rod, the kind of uh, rod that they would use in printers and things like that for pre precision positioning of components. It attaches, once again, using existing uh, things on your telescope. This is just the handle of the base, and we just remove the handle, put this heavy L, aluminum L bracket on, put the handle back on, and then it uses hardware. There's a clevis, and, uh, and it's actually got a screw thread in it, and then a coupling and then that couples to this stainless steel rod. Now this is just a plain stainless steel rod that rides through a sleeve, okay, right here. And that sleeve is metal lined. It's got a metal tube in it that that rod uh, rides in. And then this is a knob, and this gets you uh, kind of large adjustments in altitude. So you just loosen it up, tighten it up, and there it goes. Now this piece right here, the sleeve, actually, it's made out of wood and it's got a channel down here where the stainless steel rod goes, but it's got another channel up here and that's where the Acme lead screw goes. Here you can get a better feel for that thread. Uh, it's all stainless steel and I'll go ahead and lift this up and see the Acme rod rides free. There you can see the, the uh, where the channel is for the lower uh, solid stainless steel bolt 
And so this can ride free. And that orange structure there, that is a thrust bearing. And so combined with the brass bearing in the micro wheel, very, very smooth adjustments in altitude. And it's all relying on gravity. Okay, the, uh, on the azimuth, the actual uh, system does not really use tension on the screw on the base down in there. It's pretty much just the tension on the belt. On the altitude, of course, zoom L telescopes and Apertura telescopes, same thing, have these wonderful adjustable uh, altitude adjustments to, to increase the tension on it. But you don't even need those. This is this is this is loose. Okay, it's not completely loose, but it's got very little tension on it because the system relies on gravity. And so when I'm spinning it down, gravity is kind of pulling it down. When I'm going up, it's working against the thrust bearing underneath. So it's all once again, very, very smooth and it moves the telescope up. It really is a remarkable system. It does rely on the telescope being a little bit top heavy. And uh, yes, my telescope is rather top heavy. I've got the uh, Orion little Y mount there with my 8x50 racer, racy finder, and my laser pointer. And this is the 2 inch Bader Hyperion 8 to 24 zoom lens. So I do have a little bit of heft up here. But uh, once again, he makes use of existing screws. So this collar right here is attached to the telescope by screws right here. Well, to attach the top of the altitude control, this is once again a piece of wood. You simply remove the screw from here and here, existing screws, and simply move this into place. And it's got a nice uh, little cushion on here and then use the screws that Dan provides to screw it in. And, and it's in there pretty tight. All of the connections have rubber washers and heavy duty connectors. And once again, this one is also threaded so that when I go to take this apart, I can actually just unscrew with the coupler. And there's a different thread that goes into this clevis here. And, uh, and I can remove this bar very easily. So for transport, it's really a very simple thing to do. Uh, you simply undo the rod here, undo the rod there, slide it together. Over here on the altitude, there's, uh, there's just one uh, a little hex nut on the pulley. You loosen that, take the pulley off, remove the rod, and uh, put the pulley back on so you don't lose it and it transports in the back of my Toyota 4Runner just like it ever did. And to put it back together, it simply put the belt back around the base, slide the shaft in, put the pulley on. The pulley, the adjustments here is the pulley is going to be exactly level with the bottom of the shaft because he's got another adjustment collar here where it can be, uh, you can adjust the height of the bully, pulley. And here you can see the the brass bearings. It's got two brass bearings in this uh, structure here. So it's all high quality material. Uh, the, um, the shaft, the black shaft here is made out of wood and, uh, and Dan hand turns those and hand finishes them. The finish is very, very nice. Uh, everything is wonderfully machined and, uh, and really well done throughout. Uh, this system is, uh, you can find it on uh, Dan's website, slowmotion.com, and he's got a lot of other pictures of it, and uh, it really is something to, uh, to experience. One of the couple of advantages when you're star hopping, which of course is what I do, uh, that it's extremely easy when you're moving just in two directions at once, very precisely. And you can line things up on the crosshairs of your uh, finder scope very, very easily. I have found that this system makes star hopping much, much easier. Also, 
when you're at a star party, of course, what's the first? You're, you're, you're lined up on an object, and the first kid comes up to look in your eyepiece, and what's the first thing they do? They grab hold, and they move it. Well, with the slow motion system, it's not going to move in altitude. It's only going to move in azimuth when they do that, which makes it extremely easy to get it centered right back on the object. Don't miss a beat. And, uh, and it also makes tracking the object, uh, even at high power, recentering it for the next guest, very, very simple. Now, even though this telescope doesn't have it, uh, for telescopes that are equipped with push-to systems, so a hand controller where you line it up and then you put in the object you want to find, and you, uh, it tells you which way to push the telescope, with a system like this, that would make that just so much easier to use because you're not having to worry about going up and down and back and forth and diagonally all at the same time. But the pointers, the arrows on the control are telling you go left, go left, go left. Well, you just dial that in right here very, very easily until you're pinpointed there. And then go up, go up, go up. You dial that in right here until you're pinpointed there. It looks like kind of a lot of stuff to have attached, but uh, I found that I was using this system just absolutely, it was a breeze within about uh, just a few minutes of starting to use it. One thing that you do have to watch out for is that uh, when you're adjusting the altitude, you do have to remember that you have to loosen that knob and slide up and down on this rod. And usually you're going to be pushing up against the micro wheel here. But sometimes I get excited and I'm used to just lifting my telescope up and I pull it up. And if this is slid too far down, uh, this is an 18 inch rod. Both of these, well, all of these things are 18 inches. So this rod is 18 inches, the sleeve is 18 inches, and this uh, Acme lead screw is 18 inches. So you've got a lot of, of, uh, of distance there. But you have to be careful because if you get kind of excited or, or do what you might be used to doing and you just start slewing up, okay, you can see that that lead screw rod comes out. Now, it's long enough so that where I've got it adjusted now, it's not going to fall out, okay? But you can see that it is getting close to the end of its travel. Um, so you do have to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more aware of what you're doing. Uh, with that. Dan also supplies a very nicely made knob. You can see how big that knob is. And that's made out of wood. Very smoothly finished. Very nicely finished. And once again, uh, in keeping with the idea of not having to drill any extra holes in, this is a screw that would have normally been used to hold this collar on. And so you're not drilling adding anything to the telescope. You're using all the existing uh, holes. So this is the slow motion system. Uh, it'll go right on. He's got kits available for Zumel 8, 10, and 12, and also the Apertura 8, 10, and 12, which they're basically exactly the same telescope. Um, and he also has plans and kits that he can put together for just about any uh, telescope that uh, Dobsonian based telescope that you might uh, that you might have well well worth uh, the effort and the time to learn it which is practically zero and uh, and very much uh, worth the price this has changed how I do astronomy